Well, Eric, it is great to be with you as always for what we're calling uh, the Biz Coach Show 2.0. And we've got some exciting changes coming to the show. And I'd love to just pick your brain a little bit about kind of what is the big pivot that we're doing with the show. Let's start with that. And I've got some more questions for you. Awesome. So, yeah, it's uh, episode uh, or season two, right? <laughs> That's right. Yep. Season two. Season two, episode 50, somewhat or other. I don't even know what we're at. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is we're not at 100 yet, and we're well past one. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so great question. Uh, lots of new things going on. Um, I say new things. You know, we're still continuing to help businesses grow and scale their organizations. Uh, there's been some uh, interesting changes in the industry over the last couple of years. Um, so we we're, we're coming up on five years now. So believe it or not, my biz coach has been uh, operating well. I did have a brand change. It was about a year and a half into it was uh, during COVID. So uh, maybe not five years as my biz coaches, but I've been coaching for five years. Uh, coming up in five years. So with that all said, there's been some changes in the uh, in the industry as a whole, and and uh, lots of unique things coming evolving. You know, it's a, there's um, you know as as I look at the business coaching space as being a coach for for businesses, business owners. Uh, you know, we're, I'm a little bit more, and I hate using this term, I'm a little bit more of a generalist. Uh, I'm comfortable in a number of different companies, uh, industries. I, I'm pretty industry agnostic, quite honestly, for myself. And the fields that I'm comfortable in, or uh, fields, but the, the the areas of the business that I'm comfortable in is pretty much all of them. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not a, a specialist in, in many of them, uh, but I'm comfortable at least speaking to a lot of them. That's unique. Uh, I didn't realize that when I started this, and and I'm learning more and more that um, that that uh, that generalist approach, very valuable in my perspective, uh, and ironically, um, it really opens the door and gets more people to talk to me. The difference is, um, you don't go as deep uh, with certain categories of the business, and I think that what uh, what I've seen for some of the other coaches that are out there. Uh, lots of uh, fractional COOs, fractional CFOs, fractional general counsel, seen some fractional CEOs. Uh, but I've seen a lot of these uh, more specialized, uh, I'm going to call them business coaches because that's basically what they are, if you want to call them consultants, whatever. But they're coming in with these specialized uh, categories and they're focusing on certain areas of the business, which is valuable. The only concern that I have, and I've seen this evolve over the last two or three years, is that um, if I'm a business owner and I've got a decent sized business, uh, let's say I'm doing a million and a half a year in revenue, I'm netting 20%, I'm bringing in 300,000 a year. It's a nice, comfortable business. I'm doing well for myself. So the question becomes, somebody comes to me like myself and says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna coach you and I'm gonna help you grow and I'm gonna take you from a million five to let's say 5 million over the next three years. And the question then becomes, okay, well, what, what do I as a business owner really need to grow and scale my business? Well, if I'm a fractional CFO, what do you think I'm going to tell you, David? Finance. We need to work on the finances, right? And if I'm a fractional COO, what's likely what I'm going to say that I think you need to do to focus on growing your business? Streamline operations. Streamline operations, right? So... Um, you know, the finance person's going to look where they can cut, maybe create some tax advantages. They're going to, you know, cut back on some, uh, you know, it may, maybe do some job costing and things like that, which will make me more efficient, right? Totally, all good things, right? Absolutely good things. Fractional COO, going to tighten up the operations, going to lean things out, maybe do some Six Sigma stuff, right? All good things. But what's the best strategy? We don't know. Right. We don't know until we get in the business. And we really start diving in and understanding what is the opportunity here and what's, you know, this particular business is, you know, I've said this many times. We really focus a lot more on service based businesses, but we can work with any space. And what I find interesting is even within our own coaches is that if, if you have a niche where you're really comfortable in, that's great. It helps you identify for the clients that you're working with. You know, that, that, like who needs your services right now? David, you do a lot of training. If I'm growing and scaling and I'm at a lot of people, you're somebody I need to sort out because your skill set of doing training and development, maybe some leadership development, coaching and things like that, that's going to be valuable if I'm adding new people to my team. 
Right. So my point being is, as you kind of look at the mix, what we what we recognize is there's a lot of people out there doing the same things, doing them slightly differently, not wrong, right? Just different. And with that said, um, it, uh, what I what I see is I see I see some owners coming to me saying, "Do I need a fractional CFO? Do I need a fractional COO? Do I need you, Eric, as a business coach? Um, do I need do I need a fractional HR?" Right, which is a whole other category that we didn't I didn't even mention yet. So my point being is that, is that now now all of a sudden there's a competition for those dollars. Right. That's what I'm really trying to get to here. There's a competition for those dollars, and at the end of the day, each one of them will have some kind of ROI. Again, going back to the fractional CFO, we do some job costing. We recognize we could increase prices, cut back on a few things, maybe you know have some some certain benefits and increase the profit margins. Right. If uh, if we do uh, we could do a fractional CMO and have somebody who's in marketing efforts right and they're increasing marketing bringing in more transactions we have fractional VP of sales and they come in and they help increase our closing percentage. I do all of that. Right. <laughs> I do all those things that we just referenced to some degree or another. And when it's outside my comfort level, when it's deeper than the, if you, the need that you have is really deep when it comes to people. And we need some personality development or uh, uh, um, employee development, and we need some leadership development, and we need training courses created. David, I'm not doing that. I'm getting on the phone and I'm calling David Megan and say, David, I got a client for you. Right. That's not what I do. Right. Yeah. I'll help roll it out. I'll help implement it. Right. But I'm not. That's I'm not going to create it. That that's that's your space, man. That's uh, that's where you live. That's where you shine. Uh, and so I've come to recognize that there's a lot of people out there because they're good at certain categories of business and they're really dip deep in those niches. And, and I'm, I'm recognizing that equally good, but the question becomes is, is the client getting the best solution that they need right now? Right. And so where I'm actually kind of in, uh, intrigued is as a generalist, I think I help guide that client to the right option. Whereas I think that the, like I said, the other niche coaches, um, whatever categories they're, they're they're most specific to, and there's a lot in the marketing space and certainly in the, a lot in the sales space as well. So just as comparable to the COO and, this, and, the, and the fractional CFOs, right? It's, it's all, everybody's got their thing that they're good at. The question becomes, what am I going to sell you if I'm in front of you? Right. And as a business owner, I, I'm I'm going to get sold on what I think I need, and if I come to you, and this is I, I've said this many times on the show, a lot of people came to us saying, "Hey, I have a lead problem," mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm like, I know you think you have a lead problem, and you may be right, but there's a possibility you also have a conversion problem, right? Or your conversion problem is bigger than your lead problem. Yeah, you're or not closing at a rate. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're not closing at a rate that would be commiserate with the amount of leads that you're getting, and consequently, that's why your business isn't growing. Right. So all of that to say is, that as we kind of acknowledge that, I think that rather than try and compete like that, what I'd rather do is try and collaborate. Right. That was the takeaway, and it's always been my approach. But the more that I see, you know, these fractionals coming into the space, you know, even even in. Uh, uh, the networking groups where we have exclusivity, you know, like, well, you're an exclusive and in, in, in legal, right? And you're exclusive in insurance and you're an exclusive in, and I'm an exclusive in a coach. But then there's a fractional CFO in the space and they do a lot of the same conversations that, that I have, you know, and the, the fractional COO, and they have a lot of the same conversations that I have. So, um, you know, I, I almost feel like the, the business coach moniker is getting bastardized and like, oh, who's that guy? Um, and whereas I think that my approach is the best, of course, I would assume that, right? Because that's, it's my approach, right? I get that. But I think at the end of the day, I'd rather come at it from an, a, a collaborative uh, effort, which I think it's better for the client. And we can help that diagnose the client's problem holistically, identify what they need. Because here's the other thing, David, if, you, if, if, if I work with you for training, and we develop uh, a training program that you introduce and roll out to my team, let's say, for instance. And uh, I've watched you do that for 15 years with our sales teams. Right? I know your skill set. I know how capable you are. Let's say we roll that out. You're pretty efficient at it. You get it done in three, six months. 
Yeah, for sure. A full engagement, you know, a fair number of employees, right? Three to six months. Yep. <clears throat> Do I continue to really need that high level of involvement from you, or does your role really get reduced after the rollout's completed? Yeah, generally reduced, right? Right. Yeah. So, and at that point, then where does it transition to? What, what, where, where would I need that? So, if the people have been onboarded and we've developed yeah. an onboarding process, which I also know you do. And then you introduce, you know, then you put them through this training program. Well, now maybe what we need is a fractional VP of sales to manage that sales organization. Yep. Right. For instance. Right. And so so now it's a fractional VP of sales and they might need that for six months to a year until they in, oh. in house determine who's the right person for that role. And now they have an in-house sales manager, whatever the title they well they give them. And, and that person takes over. So now we're, and then at that point, the company may need to go, okay, well, now we've increased sales and productivity. Now we've got to increase our, our ability to fulfill. Right. So now, now maybe I need that fractional COO because we got to tighten up the back end. Right. Yep. So my point being is that as you fix one problem, this is, this is straight out of Alex Ramosi. Solve the first problem, demonstrate the second problem. Because the improvement of solving the first problem will create the second problem. More right. sales equates to more fulfillment. More fulfillment means I need to fix the, the operational drag that's slowing down and not allowing my cli clients to get what they need in a timely manner. Once I fix that, well, now, now I've got some other internal things that I need to focus on. So the point being is that at the end of the day, no one coach is the ideal engagement partner for an, any extended period of time. Yeah, totally. Best approach is a collective. And is then you that's doing that though, Eric. Is there a collection of coaches out there? Th there is. I, know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I we we you know I would say that there's probably somebody doing it somewhere. I haven't seen anybody, and that's where that's where my biz coaches is going now. So long answer to your to your uh, question. I think that at the end of the day, the reality is we recognize that the collaborative approach is the right approach. It's what I've been okay. preaching all along. But as I see these other coaches coming in, I don't think that it's wrong. I, I know what they're trying to accomplish. I see what they're doing. I just recognize that I think oh, the, there, there's a better approach that gives the client a better solution longer term. And it's a more sustainable progression over an extended period of time. Absolutely. Right? Because as they move from each facet of growth, then you adapt in, okay, well, now I need more attention. I may not not need you at all, David. I just don't need you as much as I did when we rolled out all those trainings. Yeah, right. And, and so then you just stay on as a consultant and, and you and you fill in the gap. You know, once a month we check in on things and we make sure everything's going. Because you, 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 you determined who our in-house trainer was. Right. And you sure. trained the in-house trainer and now they're on board and they're doing their thing. And, and you just keep checking in with that person now. Yeah. Right. So that's what I think is the better solution. That's what we're trying to build. Uh, I should say that's what we're building right now. It's what I spent the last year really kind of resonating on and like what where where's the gap here? Where's where's the opportunity? And at the end of the day, I think that that's the real vision that I have for my biz coaches going forward. Yeah, I love that. And I would say that that creates a problem, right? Like you just said, which is. Right. Dude, you need a lot of coaches, right? So, so <laughs> let's talk about that for a minute, kind of how that relates to the new direction of the show. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So what we intend to do with the show going forward this year is we're going to focus on coaching coaches, helping coaches understand um, basically what I just said, right? How do, you, how do you make sure that you're providing a great experience for your client uh, while still uh, running your business, building your business? Um, not losing clients because I'm not saying you should lose clients. I'm just saying make sure that you're giving them what they need when they need it, as opposed to giving them what you have because you Whether need, they need it or not. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> which which we've seen that. I mean, I, when I started in coaching, that was one of the things that somebody said to me many many times. I really like your approach because you meet me where I'm at mm -hmm. instead of trying to walk me through this pre-formatted step by step process. And I'm like, well, we have a process. But I can recognize in steps one through 10 where you're at and you're at four. So why focus on the first three? You already got those dialed in. Let's jump to four. Yeah. Right. So 
I've got my process too. The difference is I'm not going to be remedial and make you go through a bunch of steps that you're not, you know, you're like, oh, this is, this is dumb. Why am I wasting my time with this? And right. we got a lot of feedback like that in the beginning. Yeah. So I think that's a big piece of that. So our, our emphasis is in helping them, uh, those the, those those other coaches out there, help them understand how to how to create the best engagement strategy for their clients, and 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 we're creating an environment where it's a collective where people can come and work with us side by side and share their experience. Because like I said, I I'm not going deep on finances. High level, I, and I'm fairly well spoken in finance as it comes to business, but I'm not going to go super deep. I'm not going to try and be a CFO. Not my space. I can go pretty deep in sales, but even then, I'd much rather be kind of more cursory across the, t uh, uh, the all levels and then hand it off to those individuals that are really good at that stuff. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So, but yeah, so our, our focus for the show going forward is we're going to, we're going to continue to look at opportunities to help people understand how to engage the client more effectively, how to build a coaching business. Um, we are, our, our platform that we're developing uh, is, is designed to uh, bring more clients in and expose them to the idea of having multiple coaches to work with. Yeah. No, and I think, I think that makes a lot of sense. So I, just to kind of clarify, right? So if somebody's watching the show today, and they're watching it because, hey, I'm interested in learning how business coaching works. I'm a business coach myself, and I want some advice or tips or just you know different ideas, right, to freshen yeah. up my approach. Or maybe, hey, I've thought about coaching, but I don't know if it's for me. I don't know what's involved. I don't know how to get started, right? The show will be perfect for those people. But let's talk a minute about people that have maybe been watching us that are small business owners, you know, entrepreneurs, and the, the content's going to shift a little bit for them. So let's maybe talk a minute about some of the other kind of content strategies we have for that audience segment, if you would. Yeah, great point. So we're going to be adding additional shows. And those shows will be more specific to those business owners. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to categorize them slightly different. So um, there's a huge push. Matter of fact, I did some research on this since our last, um, uh, uh, what I call it, uh, not debrief, but um, analysis that we were doing as we we're kind of analyzing all everything here. And uh, one in five um, people in the United States are solopreneurs. So 158 million people actively have a job, have a, a, some are working. Uh, of those one in five, 19.6% are solopreneurs. Yeah. So one person business oh, wow. owners or one or two, you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Huge number. 31, 31 million. Well, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and, and that's, that's great, right? Cause that's the first segment we're going to focus on. And, and the reason that's important in this audience, audience segmentation is we talk a lot about, you know, team development, leadership, right? Those sorts of things. If you're a solopreneur, you know, give a crap about that because it's just you, right? <laughs> so, so now it's gonna be content for them versus, you know, hey, I I run a you know small to medium sized business and have a lot of personnel challenges and those sorts of things, and we can make content that's more interesting to them. So I love I love the new strategy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and to your point, David. So you have the solopreneur group. Uh, we'll have the small to mid sized uh, companies, and we'll have the and and we're kind of categorizing each of those right now. The sh the additional shows will come out as a as we really fine tune those um, with some feedback as we're ga gathering more insight. <clears throat> the reason I started, when I want to start with the solopreneurs is, as you know, the way that I grew my business was through personal ne networking, right? right. Face to face, yeah. old school, you know, uh, networking, which has now evolved into online uh, networking groups through Zoom and stuff like that. But still, effectively, I'm engaging person to person, right? One on one for the most part. Even if it's a uh, you know it's a group of thirty people, I'm still having to go into subgroups and, and connect with these individuals and have one on ones and develop those relationships, and that's how I built my business. Yeah. Of the people that I engage with in those spaces, far and away, eighty percent or more are actually solopreneurs. Yeah. Right. So even more so, the reality is is that that is a space that I'm very familiar with. Even though you and I have tons of experience in bigger companies running lots of employees and, you know, 50, $100 million in revenue, <coughs> excuse me, 
the reality is at the end of the day, I've been in this space for the last five years with a lot of people that are 1099 solopreneurs that are trying to get their business off the ground and the needs and the resources that they have available to them and the needs that they're trying to fulfill are much different to your point earlier. And those are the people I want to work with first, because that's where I spent a lot of time over the last five years building this business. And so that will be where we go. And then we'll continue to add those additional um, uh, classes or I'm sorry, classes, uh, shows to uh, incorporate the other groups. We'll also be introducing some other coaches as well. Yeah. Which is pretty cool, right? I mean, as much as people love, you know, you and I talking all the time and looking at your face every every show, uh, it'd be probably good to get some some fresh perspectives and some new personalities in. Uh, Absolutely. So excited about well, that's, that. that's why that's why I had to get all those uh, all those people that we interviewed and, and brought onto the show because nobody right. just wants to listen to you all day. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, I need some fresh blood every once in a while. That's right. That's right. No, I love it. Well, and I think I think what's cool, well, first and foremost, right, as we look at the data too with the solopreneurs, is generationally, right, you're seeing a lot of Gen Z are leaning more of that route, right? So you have millennials that's kind of started this, you know, kind of gig economy type thing, and then that led to more freelancing. And now you have people that are looking at, well, I don't want to just, you know, be a, a 1099 for you know some other company. I want to do my own thing, right? So that it's right. going to that next level of taking that side hustle, taking that freelancer type thing and turning it into a a solopreneur business, right? So I think that's gonna be really important. And so if that's what you're interested in, you know, definitely look at that content. Um, I'd say, you know, it'd be actually really helpful, I think for for Eric, if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I'm not really interested in coaching, I'm not really a solopreneur, let us know about your business, right? Connect with Eric on LinkedIn, go to the website, you know, shoot him an email, send in a contact form, let us know what kind of content you wanna see because then we'll prioritize that and try to find the right personality to match that. So uh, that will be really important. And then just, you know, shameless plug. Um, if you subscribe to the Biz Coach Show playlist, where, where this content generally goes, make sure you subscribe to the entire uh, My Biz Coaches channel because you'll get alerted to all of the content. So as we launch new shows, new content, um, get all of that. And of course, connect with Eric on social media where he'll be posting about the new content as it comes out. So you don't want to miss that. So definitely make sure you're aware of that because we may have some totally cool new awesome newsletter or show that you don't know about that could really be helping your business uh, when we launch it. So don't forget to do that too. Absolutely appreciate that. Yeah, and and to your point, David, you know we have uh, newsletters that will support each of the shows. Yep. Um, so whether you like your content, you know um, where you're reading it, you want the content vi- or virtually, um, not virtually, but the video, uh, you'll have both resources. Um, the nice thing about the the newsletter is that well, as as uh, uh, the con- we can go a little bit deeper in the content, I think, to some degree, right? But in addition to that, you're also will do lots of offers as we're changing this model and adjusting uh, to to support the clients the way that we feel that they want they should be supported. <clears throat> we're we're introducing new programs, new courses. Um, actually, we're going to have a lot more coursework, and there's a ton of stuff that we're going to be giving away for free. We're going to be giving away tons and tons of content for free. So the more that you engage with tools, uh, courses, uh, lots of different stuff that we'll make available. So you can see the kind of the, the kind of work that we're going to do, the kind of things that we're going to make available to you. And then if you're happy with that, you'll be happy to engage with our coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Yep. Well, cool. Well, yeah, Eric, is there anything else you want to share about uh, kind of the new direction of the Biz Coach Show, which is all about business coaching and made for business coaches and people interested in that? So anything about that or uh, anything else going on with my biz coaches? Yeah, I think the last thing I'd say about the channel is, is as we really dial in and um, spend more time helping business coaches, because if somebody's been business coaching and, and for, let's say, five years, right, as long as I have. And they've been doing it as long as I've been doing it. I'm sure they've got a nice little niche for themselves. The question I would ask you is, how much business have you missed? Because either you weren't familiar with the the the, the area that they were in and you couldn't really speak to it. Um, and you were like, well, no, nah, I, I, maybe you chose to pass on it. Or maybe they didn't go with you. They opted for somebody else because you didn't have the experience in there, in that area. Um, if you were to partner with us at my biz coaches, You'd still have all the benefits of being self-employed and doing everything you do and running your business the way you run it. But by partnering with my biz coaches, you also get access to people who are specialized in other categories and other areas. 
uh, in addition to, you get access to all our resources. So maybe come on the Biz Coach Show and talk about business coaching and how you do what you do, what makes you unique. You'd have the opportunity. We create video work. We create um, uh, content. We we have, uh, with our buying power, we have ability to get um, additional uh, software solutions, uh, technology enhancements. One of the things I mentioned last year, we were putting a big push on AI. Uh, we kind of paused that as we were kind of making this transition into the, uh, the business coaching coaching space. Uh, but we're going to amp that up big time this year because there's uh, substantial changes from uh, on AI. Uh, there's a, uh, a number of different opportunities to create your own AI software solutions now. And uh, I'm, I've been investigating that. I'm really excited about that. So we're going to bring in people that are specialized in those areas. So if you needed video work, if you needed marketing strategy for your, your solopreneur coaching business, if you need, uh, you'd like to learn more about AI, but you don't know enough about it, and you think that you could probably offer it to your clients as a, as a, a bolt-on solution, you could partner with my biz coaches, sell that service, and earn a commission from it. Right. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to be all things to everybody. Right. That's the other thing about a collective is with with it being multiple coaches, and we're at fourteen coaches now. So. The more coaches we have, the more people that are partnered and branded with us, the more that we can actually expand our services. And then, David, you don't have to know everything about finance. You yeah. can refer them to Jim or somebody else who's got a ton of finance experience. Um, I'd love to bring in some more fractional CFOs that are really in-depth understanding of, of business finance and, and incorporate them into our brand. So, you know, when we look to grow and expand to a um, hundred coaches or whatever that number looks like when it's all said and done, the reality is we want to be able to offer a lot of different areas and bring a ton of strength and depth in our knowledge and understanding so that we can provide even more value. Yeah. And one of the things that I've been passionate about since day one was providing coaching for everybody. Yeah. Not just the people that could afford VIP one-on-one -on -one coaching, but anybody. So we rolled out our, uh, group coaching coaching package uh, will eventually charge uh, 197 for that, but right now is an introductory offer to really build that up. We're offering it for 97 dollars a month. It's awesome, and I will tell you in all the networking events I go to, every time I mention it, I have three or four people ask me about it. Yeah, so that's going to grow really fast, and I'm excited about that because what we've also demonstrated over the last year and a half is about 15 to 20 percent of everybody who comes in on that group coaching platform will move into some kind of one-on-one -on -one vip coaching solution yeah which is incredible yep it, it's because they see the value right in the beginning it's like I, I need something to just kind of put my foot in the water yeah i don't want to jump all in because i don't know how cold the water is right, right. but let, let, let me let me get a feel for it okay yeah i like it i want more and yeah. it's really helping me, you know, logically, I'm, I'm learning how to think differently. It's giving me a platform to bounce ideas off of. It's um, providing me new insights that I wasn't familiar with. You're like, I've said a million times on this show, the, co the, the, the business owners that we work with are really good at what they do. And often the reason that they're struggling and they're frustrated is because they don't, it's, it's, it's what they don't know. And it's that age old saying, you don't know what you don't know, right? right. It, and 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 they're frustrated because they're like, well, I don't have the time to figure out TikTok. I don't have time to 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 learn how to use video and create video content, even though that would be really valuable to grow my business. Yeah. And instead, they're paying some professional who's I'm not going to say they're gouging them, but you know, it doesn't need to be that expensive. Yeah. Right. And we could we could I mean, you and I spoke to somebody just the other day about an opportunity and solution, right? That was. Yeah far more cost effective and probably I'm certain will yield better results than what their current solution was. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. That the talk track was, I, I don't want to do it. I don't have the time to learn how to do it. Please just figure out how I can get it done without having to invest the time and effort into it. Right. Yep. That's, and I think that's very true. Right. And that's where a coach can really come in, whether it's them doing it or, Hey, I've got a network of people or I've got a team of people in house that I can point you to it. It's very powerful. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll just one last story to illustrate the point. Uh, <clears throat> had a conference call the other day. I brought in some of my my best coaches to help with a solution for a potential for a coach who, who joined us. who's working through the process, relatively newer, 
still full-time employed and looking to transition, which we're going to do a show on that, by the way, uh, but looking to transition into, um, you know, becoming a coach, looking to, you know, it's a little bit more seasoned like myself, um, maybe a few more gray hairs than the average. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's decided, you know, I, I'm, I have a lot to, a lot of value to bring, but maybe I'd like to scale back my, my efforts. I don't want a full-time job. I would just want to do us, you know, a, a, I don't want to call a side hustle because I don't think that's fair, but I want to do a business that I can control my time yeah. and I can get paid what I still think I'm worth. Right. And so consequently looking to make this transition and through the discussion, he comes up with a potential client clients in this very similar space that he's in today. Uh, perfect fit from a from a you know perspective is his, his experience versus what the client does and um you know how do we package this it's a much bigger scenario than than uh, some of us have worked through yet and uh, it's a kind of opportunity that it's um it's nothing that i haven't done but it's something i haven't done as a coach personally right mm -hmm. i'm owning right. it right so yeah. i'm like that's a great question you know what i'm going to do I'm going to bring in some guys that I know they don't, they don't have that same experience either, but they got some great ideas and they've got experience in that space doing that type of work. So let's bring them all together. And so collective all is on the call. We're able to come up with a handful of different solutions. And now that individual is like, wow, I feel really empowered. I feel like I could go make a great offer, uh, close this deal with an initial, you know, initial offer that will get it off the ground, get it moving forward and allow me to come back and make a full offer, which could be um, a, a six figure uh, coaching solution that would completely replace the day job and become the, the focus of what they do. Right. It's, it, I mean, it, it could be an end and over the course of a year or two could also be extended into other similar people in this space, other business owners in the space. And he could, he could walk away with a, a three to $500,000 a year, business side business uh, i call it side it's like because he, he doesn't want to necessarily be 50 hours a week yeah but he could be doing 30 hours a week and make and pulling in gross in five hundred thousand a year yeah and that's and that to your point you don't get that when you're the lone wolf coach out just trying to do yeah. it all on your own right when you, yeah. when you join you know my best coaches when you join that network that community Right, you have more resources at your disposal. You have more expertise. You have collaboration, um, and that actually, oddly enough, right, going back to your initial point, is instead of being in competition for dollars, you're actually getting bigger clients that you probably wouldn't if you didn't have the infrastructure, the support, the collaboration. So it ends up getting you more money instead of losing money because you're working with people. You're actually gaining because you're in collaboration and taking on things you wouldn't be able to do on your own. Well, and and if you stick closer to your space, which again I get the whole niching thing, right? If you yep. if you focus of the work that you're doing is closer to your your genius, you're not having to recreate anything, right? Right. If, if like me, you have a background in sales and you had a tons of years of experience, and you had somebody like David create a bunch of content for you, then you have you have days and days of content that you can deliver at any given time, right? right. <laughs> and or you've done that presentation, I don't know couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand times, uh, you could go teach that tomorrow anywhere. And it would be super valuable to the person you're talking, the people you're talking to. Right. And, right. you know, and you wouldn't have to, I mean, you maybe tweak a little bit, but you're not, you don't have to create all it from scratch. How much more time are you saving by doing that that way? Yeah, absolutely. The niching, the niching makes sense where it doesn't make sense is when you're trying to do something outside your space because you want to hold on to that client and you don't yeah. want to lose the client, but you recognize they have another need. Yeah, you you brought up a great point, David. I just want to say this: um, the we we I, in that research that I was doing that the twenty percent of solopreneurs, uh, three primary reasons why P, why solopreneurs struggle: one, lack of capital, uh, either either capital invested like not enough money to start with, you know, a shoestring startup yep. or something yep. like that, yep. uh, and, and or aren't getting the sales that they need. To supplement yeah. and break through to grow the business. So lack of cash is the first one. Second one is lack of leverage. No staff, right? They're not using solutions like virtual assistants and things like that on a on a regular basis. Um, they have nobody to delegate to, or they're bad delegators, which is very common that yeah. we see. Right? And groupthink. Yeah. There's a tendency, right? Like when I'm the only one in the business and I've got a question or a concern I were trying to resolve. And it's just me. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I and I don't have somebody to bounce ideas off of. There's a huge missed opportunity. So being in mastermind groups, being associated with a group like my biz coaches allows you just organically to gain those insights, kind of like the call that I talked about the other night that we had. Right. <clears throat> so that was a big one, lack of leverage. Um, and then the last one was lack of planning. If you're running your own business like this day in and day out, I spent countless hours doing research. Uh, I pulled other people in to help do research, um, analysis, analyzing. If you don't know how to do a good analysis, right? There's a huge missed opportunity there, and consistent evaluation. Are you going back and and, and gauging whether or not what you're doing is working? Yeah. So the three the three big reasons why solopreneurs struggle is it lack of cash, lack of leverage, lack of planning. Yeah, I believe it. All all which cre- require you to go outside and work on your business, not in your business. Yep. It's right. hard to do. It's just you, army of one. Right? Yep. And, and and if you're if you're worth a damn as a business coach, you're telling your clients the exact same thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't yeah. work don't work in your business, work on your business. But then you as a coach, you have the exact same problem. You right. have to be able to strategically step back and look at your business and say, what's wrong with this? Yeah. Absolutely. How do I how can I fix this? Right. Very good. Well, anything else you want to share before we wrap up here? No, I think that's pretty much it. I'm excited about the direction, really excited about our focus and our goals for this year and, uh, you know, the changes that we're going to make and and we're going to do a ton more video work. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I think that's, uh, I'm excited. A year ago, not so much. Now today, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the video. Awesome. Work. Good. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and thank you for that. You pushed me to do it. But uh, yeah, just excited about the direction uh, and uh, I I see great things coming. I I think that there's a a lot of things that are aligning in the business world today that make it uh, a perfect uh, marriage between what we're adjusting to and what's going on out there. And we're going to align just perfectly for that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as always, Eric, thanks. If you're watching this and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to learn a little bit more about, you know, joining my biz coaches or figuring out if business coaching is right for me, uh, stay tuned at the end. We're going to have a QR code and a a link that you can go to uh, to learn more about that. Uh, But before we do that, Eric, as always, great to spend time with you. Appreciate all your insights today. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. All right. See you next time.